On October 17, 2021, Heidi Plank went missing on her way home after leaving her son's football game. The 39-year-old mother was reported missing to the authorities by her ex-husband three days afterwards when she failed to pick up her son from school. Video evidence from the last day she was seen alive shows Heidi walking down an alley near a high-rise apartment building in downtown Los Angeles, where her dog was later found wandering alone on the 28th floor of the building. I plan on making a full-length video on this case since there was a major development that was announced in February of this year. It turns out the apartment building Heidi was walking her dog near was home to her boy boyfriend and drug dealer. Eyewitness reports claim they saw Heidi walk up to the 40th floor of the high-rise to attend a party. It was there that she allegedly took some Adderall that was laced with fentanyl and collapsed shortly afterwards. Heidi managed to leave her dog with a dog sitter before attending the party, which explains why it was later found aimlessly wandering around. Allegedly, Heidi's body was disposed of inside the building's trash chute before getting stuck on the 28th floor of the high-rise. On a typical October morning, Jessica Ridgway disappeared after leaving her Colorado home on her way to school. Her backpack and glasses were found abandoned on a nearby sidewalk and her body was discovered just five days later. A 17-year-old teenager named Austin Sig confessed to abducting the 10-year-old when she approached his vehicle during her morning commute. He told police that he kidnapped her as she was walking towards his parked Jeep. He jumped out of the vehicle, bound her wrists and ankles with zip ties, and took her to his house. There, he forced her to change out of her clothes and into a pair of shorts. Austin proceeded to sexually assault and strangle Jessica before scattering her body near a local park and inside a crawl space located in his home. He had no previous contact with the victim prior to her attack and is now serving a life sentence without the possibility of parole. Whitney Heichel was a 21-year-old young woman who enjoyed the simple life of being happily married and working at her local Starbucks before she was reported missing by her husband after failing to show up for her Tuesday morning shift. She was found dead three days later are multiple gunshot wounds, and Jonathan Holt, the 24-year-old suspected in her murder, attended the same church as Whitney and her husband. Jonathan also lived in the same apartment complex as the couple. Police found Whitney's body discarded along the terrains of Large Mountain, roughly a 40-minute drive from Whitney's home. Her vehicle was abandoned in a Walmart parking lot with its passenger side window shattered open. During the time she was reported missing, her bank card was used to get gas at two different gas stations within eight minutes of each transaction. Her phone was found in some nearby bushes with multiple text messages on her home screen asking if she was okay. On July 8, 2013, Jonathan Holt received a life sentence without the possibility of parole for the murder of Whitney Heichel. Anna True Love was a 16-year-old girl from Georgia when she was found murdered in the woods behind her home. And it was last seen on August 23, 2012 at 7.30 p.m., standing outside in the common area of her apartment complex. By 9.30 p.m. when she hadn't returned, her mother knew something was wrong and contacted the local authorities. Police began searching the area, but a sudden rainstorm hit late that evening. Two to three inches of rain fell in just a couple of hours, creating downpours and sudden streams in the woods surrounding Hannah's site of discovery. On the morning of August 24, 2012, a man walking his dog saw what he thought was a mannequin laying in the woods. When he got closer for further inspection, he realized it was a human body. It would turn out to be the body of Hannah Truelove. She'd been stabbed several times and left in a ravine connected to her apartment complex's drainage system. The rainwater washed away a lot of potential evidence from the scene of the crime. To add more mystery to the tragedy, days before her death, Hannah wrote on social media that she was in fear of her life, and it was rumored at school that she had a stalker and a secret cell phone that she used to communicate with miscellaneous people. Although there was one suspect interviewed in connection with the case, the police cleared his name after a second interview was successfully conducted. Authorities believe Hannah was lured and killed close to the location where her body was ultimately found. Christian Aguilar was an 18-year-old college freshman at the University of Florida when he went missing on September 20, 2000. 2012. He was last seen when he reportedly got into a fight with his 18-year-old friend Pedro Bravo about Christian's girlfriend. Before dating Christian, Erica previously dated Pedro when the two went to the same high school. Erica and Pedro were high school sweethearts until Erica ended the relationship before attending college. Out of obsession, Pedro transferred to the same university to be closer to Erica, but she had already moved on. Christian and Erica decided to keep their relationship a secret from Pedro. In that September, Pedro claimed he was undergoing a depressive episode and asked Christian to meet up for support. In actuality, Pedro found out Christian and Erica had been dating. That was the last time Christian was seen alive. He was reported missing on September 20th and his body was discovered 22 days later. Pedro was eventually charged with first-degree murder, and although he denied killing his friend, his various detailed journal entries documented his obsession with his ex-girlfriend. Pedro was convicted of poisoning and strangling Christian in his car before he left his body 60 miles outside of Gainesville, Florida. Authorities reported that Pedro drugged and strangled Christian for 13 minutes outside of a Walmart before transporting his body to the woods. Lab reports found that an empty Gatorade bottle in Pedro's car had been packed with Tylenol PM. He then goes on to fatally strangle the 18-year-old freshman before dumping his body in a desolate location. Pedro was convicted and sentenced to life in prison for the murder of Christian Aguilar. Lizzie Marriott was reported missing by friends and family after she failed to respond to concerned phone calls and text messages. Her car was found abandoned in the parking lot of the University of New Hampshire campus, and when the police reviewed Lizzie's texts, they discovered her last contact was with a friend named Kat. Lizzie and Kat made plans to meet up at Kat's apartment the night of her disappearance. 
Unbeknownst to Lizzie, Kat had been involved with an abusive boyfriend named Seth, who was also there when Lizzie visited the apartment. At some point in the evening, Lizzie was attacked and sexually assaulted by Seth. Her body was discarded in a local river, and her sweatshirt was found in the apartment complex's dumpster. On August 14, 2014, Seth was charged with second-degree murder in connection to her disappearance, but the body of the 19-year-old was never found. Ultimately, Seth's girlfriend was never found guilty for any of the crimes, nor was she ever incriminated as an accomplice. Police believe that Lizzie was either strangled or suffocated inside Seth and Kat's apartment the night she went missing. Tiffany Foster was a mother of three who was recently engaged and was preparing to graduate from Georgia Military College before she vanished on March 2, 2021. The 35-year-old was last seen in her apartment on March 1st and was reported missing when she didn't show up for class the following day. Tiffany subsequently missed work and then a flight to Texas on March 11th. Investigators then found her car on March 8th, roughly 30 miles from her home. Purse and keys were still inside the vehicle, but Tiffany was nowhere to be seen. Her fiancé, Reginald Robertson, was arrested in April 2021 in connection with an incident that predated Tiffany's disappearance and was charged with separate crimes of kidnapping and aggravated assault. He claims he spoke to Tiffany before she was going to run an errand that day she went missing, but never heard from her again. Two years later, Tiffany's body has never been found and her fiancé is currently incarcerated. Lynn Jackenheimer was a 33-year-old mother from Ashland, Ohio when she disappeared while vacationing with her boyfriend named Nate Somerville and her two children. Her body was found in a vacant lot in North Carolina, about 20 to 30 miles from the hotel she was staying at. Police confirmed Nate dropped off Lynn's children back at their home, effectively kidnapping and abandoning them before driving off shortly afterwards. He was indicted by a grand jury on charges of first-degree murder. He admitted to killing Lynn by strangling her and then took the children back to Ashland before abandoning them at their home. He claims he has no recollection of the murder and will spend the next 30 years of his life in prison. Five-year-old Summer Wells vanished from her home in Hawkins County, Tennessee in June of 2021. Later that month, investigators said they were looking for the driver of a Toyota pickup truck that was spotted in the area around the same time Summer vanished. The driver was never located or identified. The Tennessee Bureau of Investigation said there was no evidence that she was abducted, adding that they were continuing to examine suspected foul play. Another potential scenario is Summer mistakenly wandered off and got lost in the rough terrain around her home, but almost two years later, her case remains unsolved and Summer has never been found. Her Amber Alert remains active, and her parents hold on to the hope that one day they will be reunited with their daughter. Adam Pasquale went missing while riding her new bike around her typically safe neighborhood. She climbed on her white BMX bike on a Saturday afternoon, pedaled away from her home, and was never seen alive again. Thousands of people in her neighborhood and nearby towns searched backyards and fields, only to find her body two days later in a blue recycling container in front of a vacant home. Less than 72 hours after her disappearance, police announced the arrest of two teenage brothers named Justin and Dante Robinson. Prosecutors said the brothers lured Autumn to their home across town and killed her in a scheme to steal parts from her bike. Both were charged with first-degree murder in connection to Autumn's death.